With a deadline looming tomorrow, tensions are running high over drawing Chicago's new ward map, which will determine the distribution of power in City Hall for the next decade. If that vote doesn't happen tomorrow, it triggers a possible public referendum where voters could make the final decision. And here to talk about the latest are Alderman Scott Wagesback of the 32nd Ward on the north side, Alderman Gilbert Viegas of the 36th Ward on the northwest side and chair of the Latino Caucus, Alderman Stephanie Coleman, who represents the 16th Ward on the southwest side. She is the vice chair of the Black Caucus. And Alderman Jason Irvin, who represents the 28th Ward on the west side and chairs the Black Caucus. Let's get right into it and lay out the stakes. A map must pass with 41 votes tomorrow, or it triggers a public referendum where voters could choose on potentially multiple maps. And at this point, there are no 41 votes. There's no agreement. There's lots of acrimony. Alderman Wagesbeck, what's the very latest? Well, I think we're meeting tomorrow in hopes of continuing some negotiations. And we've got two of the main caucus chairs here and the vice chair, vice chairwoman. And I think that, you know, what we're going to try to do, as we always do in this council, is to sit down and try to work things out with this map. Uh, these are very difficult uh, maps to, to work on. You know, we just... Um, we just went through a major budget session. Uh, people have been diligently working together, and I think that will continue here. So I'm hoping to see what comes up tomorrow, but we could go to referendum. I think everybody's trying to hope to. And Alderman Coleman, the central dispute here has been that the Latino caucus has proposed two more Hispanic majority wars than it currently has, reflecting population gains there. It would come at the expense of black majority wards, uh, reflecting population loss in that community. Do you see any compromise here? You know, I, I have to divert to our chairman, uh, Chairman Urban, because the priority is based on populations that we finally have an opportunity to unify those South Central communities uh, like mine in Inglewood, Chicago Line, Gage Park, back of the city. And our, our number is our number, and we are, our number is our number, and I'll direct to Chairman Irvin. All right, uh, do you, you do chair the Black Caucus, uh, Alderman Irvin. Uh, is there a compromise with the Latino Caucus, which has said that the, the outlines of a proposal you put out is not tenable? Well, again, uh, we always want to look at what's best, what's fair, and what's equitable for Chicago as a whole. And again, if there's a room to have a conversation, there's always an, a possibility of reaching an agreement. Um, however, uh, those agreements cannot harm uh, protected classes. And unfortunately, we have not found that common ground at this point. But again, there's still time for us to uh, get there if we can, uh, you know, have and a meeting of the Is 17 African American majority wards your red line? You're not going to go below that. No, we believe that that is the proper number for our community, as we feel the number of 14 is proper for the Latino community. And again, I think that if we look at uh, what can actually be sustainable as ward for both communities, um, I believe some of the things that have been proposed are not sustainable for both communities. Uh, in my opinion, it, it does not make sense to potentially create a ward that on paper may say one thing, but in reality is, is something else. I think we need to be honest with the citizens of our city and honest with ourselves of what we're actually doing and not play games with uh, our communities in respect to uh, what we're saying and what we're doing. So, so, so that's why I think we can work. As we sit here, it looks like there will be no 41 votes tomorrow, no agreement to Alderman Viegas. If that's the case, what is next for the Latino caucus? Because it's clear that the Latino caucus and the Black caucus are still pretty far apart on what they want. Well, I, I say that we're not too far apart. The reality is, is that um, if there could be some real candid discussions, compromise, uh, we have a problem right now with the uh, the process that's occurring within the Rules Committee where uh, the uh, quote unquote, some of the aldermen are locked in. I can tell you that our community is being locked out uh, because of the fact that we are being forced to draw wards uh, within boundaries, artificial boundaries that have been put forward by the Rules Committee. And that's an issue. Uh, listen, we always wanna negotiate. I think that um, we, have a, uh, we have a great relationship within the city council. We don't wanna put, um, uh, have, have to go to referendum. It would cost um, you know, millions of dollars. We would also potential litigation. I think there's always the opportunity. And I would mention that Latinos are a protected class as well. And that's where you see the interesting pattern here is that you have two protected classes uh, that are um, 
trying to make sure that their communities are being uh, represented fairly. And I think that if we continue to if we continue to have discussions, Alderman, we can get there. Alderman Wagespeck, an X factor here is Mayor Lori Lightfoot, who uh, campaigned on an independent process, although she has not supported the so-called People's Map. This process has been like it always is, back room. Has the mayor broken her promise here? No, I don't think so. I think uh, the People's Map, you know, they had some good ideas, but they kind of went off on their own and did their own thing. Um, you know, 10 years ago when we were looking at making some changes, we asked to put some guidelines in and that didn't really happen. But I don't think she's broken her promise here. The aldermen have been working pretty diligently on this. She has stayed on the sidelines and watched and let us do our process. Um, but I think, you know, what we're going to see, um, you know, some people have said, will she veto any map? And I don't I don't think she will. And I don't think she can. Once you you know realize once you get to 34 members, uh, that's veto proof. So I don't think she's tinkering around here. I think she's allowing the city council to do its job. All right. And, and every remap, there's some casualties of incumbents. Uh, Alderman Coleman, your ward is one that could be redrawn and effectively uh, draw you out. Uh, are you concerned about that? My concern is to create a compact and continuous 16th ward so I can properly focus on those innovative strategies and investing in communities like Inglewood, Chicago Line, New City, Gage Park, not political pettiness. We need to come together and get to 41. Uh, Alderman Irvin, uh, you've released uh, like general zones for your map, but no one's actually seen your specific ward map. And if it's voted on tomorrow, that means the public won't be able to see it before it's voted on, won't be able to weigh in. How does that square with transparency? I think it, it, it does deal with the transparency because we talk about areas of our city. Um, and what we talk about are the south and west sides. We talk about the southwest side. We talk about the northwest side. And we also talked about the, the creation of an Asian ward. And these are things that have not happened before. And again, um, we don't want to be offensive to communities by uh, drawing lines. We think the representatives of those communities need to be the ones who are engaged in the process and draw the lines. And I think that's where a lot of the acrimony started in this process when others draw lines for other people that, that don't necessarily know and understand our communities. And so that's where we wanted those individuals who are most impacted to draw those lines. All right, we, we're going to leave this conversation right now. We're going to pick it up later in the show. All four aldermen will be back later in the program to continue this discussion. But for now, our thanks to Alderman Scott Wagesback, Gilbert Viegas, Stephanie Coleman, and Jason Irvin.